who did not have the benefit of being there, right? So part of what I'm trying to do is exactly that. My biggest merit is repeating the words of people who came before me. That's it. So if you allow me just a few moments here, let me open this up. quick exposition about myself just to give a little perspective so but I consider the most important part of being here tonight is not the presentation of a topic but instead the challenge to inspire at least one of you to take a more active role in your spiritism education for that purpose, I'd like to share some of my life experience and my current projects in the dissemination of the Spiritist Doctrine in English. So, I was born in the United States, raised in Brazil from 3 to 24 years of age in Rio de Janeiro. And since arriving back in the United States in 97 to 2018, I served in the United States Navy, deployed to the far in the Middle East four times. And another very good benefit of it is exposing yourself various different uh, ideologies, political views, nationalities, ethnicities, and all that, which we are normally, at least in Brazil, or even in the Brazilian community, not perhaps regularly exposed, or we exposed to a limited set of it, but being inserted into a, a national or global institution, which is you now the armed forces, specifically the United States Navy, we ha really have people from all over the world. I have met people from just about every nationality there is, every religion, every political view. And uh, if you allow yourself to be molded, you know, by that experience, you can benefit from that diversity. So, and even sexual preferences, not, it was like a couple of years ago, or maybe more than a couple of years, where there was the opening where those members could serve, you know, openly without having to hide their orientation. So it's also another big step in incorporating them into you know, our fold. Uh, the relationship that I personally trace between the doctrine and the military founded in one word, which is not going to be uh, unfamiliar to those who know the doctrine, is discipline. Those of you who remember what Emmanuel told Shiku what was essential for his work that was up to come it was just true things right and which one were they discipline 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 it's something that perhaps my brazilian side of it it's reluctant to accept you know as i actually enlisted in you know the military in brazil but i was considered an excess of, you know and did not have to serve i was going through college at the time ended up over here in the, you know in in the United States and decided to join spontaneously kinda <laughs> so uh, but I realize the value of that experience and continue but it's not take too much time in it uh, my journey in spiritism 2013 my wife Mai came to the United States and I realized that she needed to establish a support network of friends, you know, of a common ideology. And we decided, I, I look around, I, I research, and I found a Spiritist Society in Tampa. So I started our, our study and qualifications in Tampa, in Andrea Luis. And then we proceeded to actually, I was transferred to Jacksonville, proceeded our work in Seeds of Love, and came back to Tampa and continue our work to this day. Uh, actually. Mostly a love of wisdom, but we do go 
to other societies as well. However, keep a note on this bottom part right here. Nothing in my life experience makes me more qualified than you to make the decisions that matter to your reality. So I'm just sharing what has perhaps worked for me, but perhaps what you, you don't get to hear is all the mistakes I made along the way. Unfortunately, I don't have time to list all of them, but it is the benefit of each one of you to continually make mistakes and try to make new ones. Don't repeat the old ones over and over. Because if you make mistakes, because we are trying to get right. Now, so just a quick exposition on spiritismstudy.org. I like to call it the Uber of Spiritism education, and I'm going to explain more about it. So, my personal view knowledge isn't an act of love given freely what you endure to acquire, right? You committed some effort, some time, some dedication to acquire something, be it knowledge, be it material be, uh, um, items, and you given it freely. Normally that happens to our offspring, right, to our children. You work tirelessly for how many years, decades even, and you pass that on to your children because you want them to have a better future. I like to pass on what I was able to in a limited way to comprehend so others can benefit from it, right? Knowledge does not diminish when you share with others. We can only gain from this experience, right? So having started my spirit ed education in 2013, I already knew I was going to be retiring from the Navy in 2018. So uh, I found it so extremely valuable, the lessons that you learn in spiritism, that I thought that it should be taught in a similar regimen as school. Why is it not being taught five hours a day, you no, know, every weekday for 12 plus years? Because if you consider, we go through that many years of education, full time, just to be a barely passable, contributing member of society. But there is not much, you know, about the moral qualities the qualifications that you have to, uh, to attain, right? So, I seriously consider doing that, just that in my retirement, as in kind of like a home school, which I'll be putting myself through my own home school of studying hours a day in spiritism. But then, I was forced to reflect on this thought. How can others benefit from this enlarged head that I'm trying to develop, right? Is that, is I'm, am I doing just because of, no, I, I, I want to fill it with knowledge? So, shouldn't it be more broadly to shorten these study sessions and make it available to all? So, I decided to tone down a bit. My favorite tenet of the doctrine is, Spiritists, love one another. This is your first commandment. And educate yourselves is the second. The second favorite is question nine, 909 from the Spirits book which I'll ask you to please look it up when you have the chance. I'm not going to say where it is because I like the idea that uh, the act of you looking it up will help you retain the information that you did look up. So please take that as a, a little bit of homework. You may be asking yourself, how can I can call my project the Uber of Spiritist Education? So let me explain some of these objectives so we can talk about I cannot overstress the importance of active thinking in the, any educational effort. We do not really learn as much as we, all we're doing is mechanically reading, right? So consider not just what is written or exposed, but all direct and indirect implications that that topic brings forth. This is a difficult thing to develop, it's really difficult. And, but you're also going to be limited to your current knowledge set or your experience, right? If even this presentation that we're watching, depending on the nature of the participation of the audience, can be considered just passive and mechanical if the only person you know, doing the exposition is myself and there's no participation, right? So there's a limited amount of progress that, or benefit that you can input from this. So 
I ask please consider incorporating a more active learning uh, in any education regimen, whichever one that you do. I guarantee that the benefit is going to outweigh the efforts, 100 to 1. All right. So, having participated in a uh, spirits book study group, uh, many different formats, mostly just a, you read the question and immediately following, you read the answer. In the Love and Wisdom of Largo, which I don't know where they got this idea from, I think they got it from a different you know, society, but they start covering the answers with an index card. So you only read the question and we are forced to discuss the answer. Of course, we do have a leader you know, who's well versed in the doctrine that uh, controls the discussion or steers, right? So, but it's, it, I think it was a very, very beneficial exercise. So I decided to compile a study aid who did just that with the spirits book. Remove, I think I have one here, didn't I? Remove all the answers and the known uh, parts of the book, there were known questions. I have one here, I think. Okay. No, may I have one? Thank you. So, you see over here, you see the cover, but now you see how thin it is. <laughs> if you remove all the answers and known questions of it, uh, not just that, but no, it's hardcover, so it will last a lot longer than softcover books. But there are the implications of it. So, uh, this study eight was uh, initially when it was done was compiled. I did not know of all the benefits that could be derived from it. So, it is free of charge. It has been sent already to Florida, Vermont, and the United Kingdom. Uh, that same society from the United Kingdom and another one from Texas have shown interest in having me for now, for the time being, but of course I won't like to be able to replicate this, a leader of an English-only online study group, and we have plans to start this January. But please feel free to come about afterwards and kind of flip through this, uh, this sample that I, I brought. Um, but the idea is really to invite, and stimulate the rational thinking so one of the initiatives, online presence. Of course, I have to develop some online presence to advertise the effort, right? Uh, along with that, with all the effort that I have done, I consider all the knowledge that I've accrued to be open source, freely shareable. So I try to uh, expose those solutions to other spiritist societies. That way, uh, they benefit from that knowledge. They don't have to commit the mistakes I have committed already. And hopefully they won't have to, they can reorient some of the f those funds that, uh, that were used before to pay, you know, outsource, you know, uh, the establishment of online presence, web hosting, all that type of stuff, and use it for something else. Uh, so I have work done in uh, name register, domain hosting, website development, email and office suite services, information management, donation platform set up, all the type of stuff that a center or a spiritual society must have to worry about it in order to continue, you know, continually keep the lights on and the doors open. So if I can uh, reduce the amount of time they, the work is spent on caring for the material, and perhaps they can work more on benefiting the members on the spiritual side, right? Kardec after lunch. So I started in April and just a 15 minute live session, reading and commentary, very simple. And it is, there is a reason why I do it this way. I've been asked to enhance the preparation for those videos, which some may consider maybe, I don't know, perhaps improvisational in nature. But I have to say that this is, it may seem like off the cuff. It is done in, on purpose because I want to maintain the simplicity and nearly effortlessly nature of it. Uh, really, who isn't able to afford 15 minutes of your day, you know, pick up a book from the shelf, hopefully you have the whole doctrine, <laughs> you know, in your shelf, and read it in front of the camera, as let's say if you were studying, 
and comment upon what you think of what you just read, right? I, I, I think I realized that by studying out loud, it makes me think more about what I'm going to say and I'm open myself up to inspirations who come. Sometimes I have to say like, uh, I, I write a note and I can tell you know, remarkably that uh, uh, this thought did not come directly from me. You know, I may have some input in it, but it comes from outside. So, uh, so I do it this way to exemplify the ease of replication by others. Uh, other initiative is in order to the ability to deliver presentations remotely and minimize costs associated with travel expenses, um, such as this one, <laughs> not just for the Spirit of Society, but for the presenter, uh, but also to expand the ability to join multiple societies and develop others into the, um, I would say, cyber knowledge that is necessary to function well in today's world. Really learn how to use the internet, the technology that's there for the benefit of your development and uh, the, the ease of sharing with others and enlist you know, their efforts uh, to help you as well. Because the idea is, I cannot be doing this forever, materially speaking, in this incarnation, but I'm hoping that others will pick up the ball and go forth, perhaps do much more than I have. So, Uber. Amongst those present here, who, so who doesn't know what Uber does? We all know the idea of it, but let me put it in a, I guess, a more intellectual way. Uh, platforms, companies were set up around the idea of uh, you, the owner, put something that belongs to you, which may find itself idle for long periods of time, you know, put it to its intended use, and create a little source of income, right? Uh, some notable examples, of course, are Airbnb, which transform residences into lodging for rent, and Uber and Lyft, who make private, private cars into taxi cabs, kind of, right? Liberally speaking. So in this way, I intend I, and I develop a platform where we can pair the knowledge of the volunteer tutor, who may be sitting idly, right, during times of the day that he or she is not engaged in the knowledge and sharing. So engaging those volunteer tutors with the desire of learning from spiritist studies, students, sorry, all free of charge. The tutor has to sign, I'm sorry. The tutor has to sign an agreement, which is available online, but it delineates my duties to him or her and their duties to the project, all right? Uh, they also, they have to complete, uh, uh, they have to publish their availability online, much in the same way, you know, uh, Uber drivers or Airbnb hosts do. And um, their bio, books, works, and topics they are comfortable with. Uh, and prospective students, then they, they go online and in this platform, they will choose the duration of the study session, either 30 minutes or one hour currently, the chosen tutor, the date, the time, the chosen topic, and its subsequent frequency of studies, if any. If they just want it to be a one-time thing, it just be a one-time thing. There's no compromise. There's no you know, plan. <laughs> You're not joining the gym. So both parties benefit from this experience, and hopefully it will be self-sustaining, creating future tutors from current students or past students hopefully. Now we're going to the actual presentation and sorry for taking that long and explaining the project but <coughs> uh, collection of spiritist prayers gospel according to spiritism chapter 28 why is it that far out now at, at the end of the book right one thing you have to remember Kardec when developed and codified the doctrine he did it sequentially right why some people perhaps have the wrong idea that can benefit from willy-nilly picking 
different chapters of the doctrine completely randomly and uh, think that they're, they're really, I guess, affecting some progress. It is something that we do without thinking, but think of it this way. If I were to give you free reign and go into a medical school without having to complete an uh, uh, exam, have to pass a, you know, a, a qualifying test, and you are freely able to move between first year lectures, fourth year, sixth year, residence, back to first year, back to second year, you're not following a curriculum, you're not following, you're not going from simple to complex. So you're breaking the mold, kind of, right? It makes sense when I make the analogy, right? A person who spent eight, eight years doing that cannot call himself or herself a doctor. It's not that we're trying to become doctors in spiritism, but we're trying to make full use of the rationale he explains to us. So we have to go from simple to complex, page one to last page. So coming back to the prayers, let's remount to the distant past. Who were the ones considered as intermediaries between God and humans? We had names for that, right? Well, priests, rabbis, uh, prophets, right? So who were the ones expected to and even higher to pray? During the Middle Ages, church services were commonly held in Latin, effectively remaining unintelligible to most. And when hired to pray on behalf of others, what was the expectation? The expectation is the buyer had a reasonable expectation of the prayer being long, carefully worded, right, in order to justify the price paid. You kind of like paying for the, the words. So why do we have a chapter solely dedicated to prayers? Why is it located at the end of the book? So to inform, guide, and orient our thoughts and words. How do I pretend to accomplish this? Through text, audio, and video, okay? Just let me share a, a personal experience with chapter 28. Uh, about two years ago, uh, I've lost my father uh, in October 2017. And at the time I was informed, I went to chapter 28 to make a prayer for him. And we have perhaps an innate idea of when someone passes to feel sorry for that person. And I tell you, the prayer that I found reoriented my thought. And I was like, kind of, he is, in, basically told me, he is in a better place now. You are still dragging yourself along on earth. So be careful about your feelings. You should not be feeling pity for him. Now he is his spirit is free. He is able to do things uh, and interpret knowledge in a different way that we can hear. We were still immersed in the prison of flesh, what some call it. So, let's start with the video. Oops. No. Yes. I'll wait. Come back one more. There you go. Sure. It's off, that's why. Okay, thank you. Thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. I think that at least to me, like I said, this is personal to each one of you, but the audio-visual 
helps a great deal in portraying an emotion. So hopefully we'll all benefit from this. Uh, I also, I like to always, as Kardec did on page one of the Spirit's book, talk about the meaning of words. We have to get into agreement what we're talking about before we start a long discussion on it, right? So from the dictionary, prayer, an act, sorry, an address such as petition to God or a God in word or thought, a set order of words using prayer, an earnest request or wish, and the act or practice of praying to God or a God, a religious service consisting chiefly of prayers, often using in plural, something prayed for, and last but not least, a slight chance, a slight chance when people say, you don't have a prayer in this. So sometimes we are well aware of most of this, you know, uh, the meanings associated with that word, but perhaps not all of them. And Kardec mentions this in the very beginning of the, you know, the Spirit's book, where w some words have a ambiguous significance, so we have to get into agreement on what we're talking about. So, general highlights. The objective of prayer is to elevate our soul to God. The form means nothing. The thought is everything. So right there, where we just read about a specific set, does not matter. However, it is accepted, right? We saw in the dictionary, it is accepted as a, uh, a description of a prayer. But we are being informed now that it does not matter. No prescribed or absolute formula from the hearts, not from the lips. Simple and concise. Don't need useless decoration, adjectives, so you, you're not paying someone to pray for you, hopefully. <laughs> Should cause you to reflect. Repetition invites numbness, so no 40, you know, or father, or, you know, or, or, or lady of, chosen lady of, right? Sorry, not a video. This, this is manner, our first prayer. Therefore, praying. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Much more moving than, than me reading, I guess, right? So let's talk just a little bit about the Lord's Prayer. Blind is the one who does not recognize your works. Prideful is the one who does not worship you, and ungrateful is the one who does not give thanks to you. However, I like to say, when you say, have thy kingdom come, allow me to add my, my little two cents on it. To reflect and think, may we, by our efforts, elevate yourselves to thy kingdom, instead of bringing it down to us. Next, thy will be done. It is for us to observe your laws and submit yourselves without lamentations to your divine designs. Those are some of the observations straight from chapter 28. So, two more cents here. We have, give us this day your daily bread. Instead of give us, why not? Please allow us the opportunity to grow or acquire the necessary food for the maintenance of a physical strength and also a spiritual nourishment. Right? Because when we think of give us, talk about I'm just waiting for to fall from the heavens. But I thank you for the opportunity and I will use my efforts to benefit from it. Next, may you be meritorious of your mercy and may us extend the same to all our brothers and sisters. Very 
powerful and very important as well. Now, this is the line that Pope Francis recently changed from lead us not into temptation to let us not fall into temptation because that would give a, a, a wrong connotation that the word God was trying to lead us into temptation, which is false, of course. Deliver us from all evil, so be it. May your blessed will be done and not ours, since your only desire sorry, sorry, since you only desire our improvement and knows better than us what is best for us. Right? Who knows what biblical event this image depicts? Daniel in the lion's den, correct. So I gotta make a little observation later on. So the guardian angels and protecting spirits, wise and benevolent spirits, messengers of God, whose mission is to help men and conduct them towards goodness, uphold me in life's tests. Now, we have to be careful, really, what we pray for. I'm going to say this. Continue. Clarify my conscience with respect to my defects. Take away the veil of pride from my eyes, which can prevent me from seeing them and admitting them to myself. Right, does that to us. I beg you to help me to become worthy of your protection. Guardian angels are more qualified than us. Right? They should be. They better be, right? You know my needs. May they be attended according to the will of God. Now, keeping my Daniel's situation could have played out a lot different if you don't know what you're asking for, let me just show you this right here. He could have said, Lord, may this beast have a Christian heart. <laughs> Some of you have know this, right? <laughs> now, look what the, the lion said. <laughs> the lion's also a creature of God, right? <laughs> he has to be fed. <laughs> so, kid in the park. Prayers for the one who prays. While the body recuperates the spent energies which have been used during the waking state, the spirit fortifies itself amongst other spirits while we're sleeping. From the advice he is given, he takes the ideas which occur to him afterwards in the form of intuitions. A momentary liberty outside of the body that's considered to the prisoner, the spirit does not always take advantage of these moments of liberty for the purpose of progress, unfortunately. Ask for advice from the good spirits and those whose memory is dear to them so they may go join them. On awakening, they will feel fortified against evil and more courageous when facing adversities. So it is beneficial to have a little reflection, a little prayer to orient perhaps your chances of that um, re-encounter, if so be it. Uh, during your sleep. So spiritism is also culture. Who knows what statue that is? Who does it depict? Mind the spear. It is a Roman soldier centurion and he pierced someone. Yes. Saint Longinus which is believed to have been the one centurion or soldier who pierced Christ. So what happened afterwards? He became for Christ rather than against it. So, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is perhaps what I consider to be the most significant uh, part of thanksgiving for blessings received by our enemies. There is prayers dedicated to this at chapter 28. How many of us have looked it up and thought about giving thanks to the Lord for benefiting who we consider to be our enemies? Right? Jesus did just that. To not desire evil towards your enemies is to be only partly charitable. True charity consists in wishing them well and in feeling happy about the good that comes to them. They are nothing but the brothers who we do not know yet. 
Dear God, in your justice you saw fit to make X, this person, happy. And on his or her behalf, I thank you, despite the evil he or she has done me, to me and still tries to do. If he or she seeks to use this benefit to humiliate me, I accept this as a test of my capacity for cherry. I think many of you may be saying this for the first time. Never considered to be the, the, those type of prayers at the end of the gospel, right? It is necessary for us to go through the whole of the Spirit's book, perhaps through the whole of the Medium's book, uh, almost the entirety of the gospel, to hopefully be able to grasp and accept this idea as being natural from all the knowledge that we accrued from page one of the Spirit's book, right? Otherwise, you open it up directly on chapter 28, and you're like, oh, no. Right? So, prayers for those no longer on earth, for someone who had just died. Uh, I cannot remember exactly if this was the one that I referred to, but let's, let's look at it. Almighty God, may your mercy be shown to the soul of this person whom you have just called back from earth that our prayers may soften and shorten the penalties that still to be suffered in the spirit form. So it's not, those prayers are not exclusive for the showing or sympathy. They also have the effect of helping those who left their earthly ties. And in this manner, perhaps shorten the period of perturbation, you know, which, or the confusion that always follows the separation. I'm going to skip a few here this second. Prayers for the sick and obsessed. For those who are, and this has like three different prayers. Uh, I'm going to show quickly here. So there is one said by the sick person who is seeking, you know, perhaps a restoring, uh, restoration of their health. And sickness is inherent to the grossness of our material nature and the inferiority of the world that we currently inhabit. So in this manner, we must resign ourselves to the consequence of the ambient in which our inferiority takes place until we deserve to pass on to a better one. So, next we have said for or on behalf of the sick person. I implore you, Lord, to cast a glance of compassion over his sufferings or her, and if you see fit to terminate them, direct my thoughts so that a balsam may be poured over his body and consolation poured over his soul. Uh, very important, not just for the person who is suffering, how we view their suffering. It is not punishment. And another one said by the healer, or someone who is actually acting in that capacity. Dear God, if it pleases you to use me as an instrument, may I cure this infirmity. Permit the good spirits to concentrate their beneficial fluids in me, so that I may transmit them to the sick person and free me from all thought of pride and selfishness we might alter their pureness. So we just, nothing but a vehicle or instrument in the healing, right? A different view also, again, using audio visual to help you guys. This is not an accurate portrayal, but a very, very moving one nonetheless. things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. And the 
nevertheless, not my will. But thine be done. I say it's not an accurate portrayal because it gives us the impression that Jesus was not welcoming what was to come, which is not true. But, like I said, it's a very moving one. So recognize his will as being sovereign. If you can do something about it and you can change your reality by your efforts, awesome. But if you can't, resign yourself to what is your current reality, right? So, not only this passage, but also, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Also being historically misrepresented. Please look up Psalm 22 if you'd like to know more about it. Uh, to the workers of this house, thank you for making this event possible. To the audience and also my wife, thank you for the patience and indulgence you have in my shortcomings. And to God, thank you for entrusting me this one talent. May I be able to bring more in return. Thank you. Would you like to introduce some questions? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, have yes. If you, if, you guys ask if you have like to ask questions either pertaining to the chapter, that would chapter 28, or uh, Spiritism study, or my, you know, uh, anything uh, related to the doctrine, please feel free to. Okay, so uh, if if it was not clear in the audio, it's a uh, it's a question about if we have many participants in our uh, initiatives. We don't have too many, but we have significant uh, adhesion of volunteers. Uh, I don't know if many know him, Brian Foster, also a host from Kardec Radio. Uh, he was the first volunteer tutor. He joined early on. Uh, has a wealth of knowledge. Has published several books on spiritism and he published his availability online along with uh, Dulce Alan Carr Lake which is a friend of ours a worker in the uh, Spiritist Society of Largo myself so we have three volunteer tutors uh, who have uh, signed the agreement and uh, have been dedicating their time and knowledge to assist others uh, Kardec after lunch uh, has a few uh, I say regular visitors and uh, is being not only disseminated uh, or syndicated if I can put it that way on Kardec radio channel but also through a S Discovery Spiritism Network and on YouTube uh, so it is still in its infancy but uh, we are I say I'm making all the efforts necessary to maintain the effort going up until a time where, let's like, say, it self-sustains, when I'm able to let go and let other people take it and transform it, make it even better. Does, does that answer the question? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm curious, it sounded like you've got the whole nine yards set up already, so... Thank you. It, it is, it, it kind of like that. So uh, the, the volunteer doesn't have to do much work other than make his time available just like in uber you know and uh, the knowledge i recommend at least so t for you to develop the idea that like, you are a participant member of it at least two times a week you know it could be half an hour it could be one hour but at least twice a week sorry so uh and that's the idea however of course it's dependent upon each one's availability but uh if we are trying to really benefit from this, not just the tutor, but the students, if there is a increased amount of you know, availability, so much the better. Um, could you, I'm sorry. Anybody else? No, no problem. Uh, huh? I'll keep going all night. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone else about uh, something we discuss? It is um, at times, uh, of course, difficult, and I like to say the adoption of spiritism as a 
a religious, scientific, or philosophical solution for your life, it's at first uncomfortable. And I think it was meant to be that way because perhaps we were living in error without knowing it, right? With many times it happens. And once you realize what Dr. Anceloni mentioned, that like, to those who much has been given, much will be asked. So normally we tend to look at that with the eyes of material. So if you have a lot of money, a lot will be asked of you. But what about if you have a lot of time on your hands, like me? <laughs> if, you have, if you have been able to accumulate some knowledge, or if you have a lot of caring and compassion, which is my wife, shouldn't you share that? We can only benefit from doing so. Sharing is caring. So, yeah, that, that's what I believe. You know, so, but you have to voluntarily kind of accept the responsibility as your part in the providence. We are angels in training, right? But we have a homework to be done. Yes. Yes. I would imagine you've got a wonderful um, view of how coherent spiritism is with so many other religions and philosophies. Uh, um, I won't say, perhaps on my interpretation, so the question is about the, the diversity that I was able to, to encounter in the Navy and how that reverberate with the idea of spiritism. I have to say that because of the reality of my service, not only I encounter spiritism perhaps a little late in the career, and the idea is in the military, if you were senior enough to be able to knowingly or unknowingly influence others, you, if, you, it's, if it's not for the meant of the accomplishment of the mission, it could be viewed as undue influence. So you have to separate yourself from that. Uh, also, that could lead to oh, what they call it uh, fraternization, which is also against you no know, uh, good order and discipline. And so I was, I had to refrain from uh, making public or making in perhaps known my religious beliefs because because of my position, it could unduly influence those who were below me in course they may try to please me by subscribing to my beliefs sometimes even unknowingly so we have to be careful what because of the position that we occupy I, maybe I should have asked it a different way sure um, going back and looking at all the people that you run across mm -hmm. I assume you had some discussion with them about their particular Mm -hmm. That's where I was trying to come from. Okay. Um, I, and I have to say, I did not, because for most of my adult life, I did not give it no religion as we currently view it, uh, its due importance. Now, of course, we can spend a whole nother lecture talking about the meaning of religion as, you know, uh, as it comes from the dictionary how it was represented throughout history and what it should be. There's a disconnect in that. But, uh, so the answer, I guess, would be no. I did not have the opportunity. Uh, and I did not see many parallels in those who I discussed, perhaps philosophically, uh, about life. Uh, many parallels in, in their beliefs. Sometimes I was able to ca uh, capture a a sliver, perhaps, of similarity, uh, and but as of course, it's dependent upon the person's upbringing, and many of us still believe in the passive, or the, the passive action, or the, pas the passive subscribing to a religion, where if you accept someone as your savior, you don't need to do anything, right. or the price has been paid already, instead of heaven will help those who help themselves. I have to do my part. So it's a different mentality. Yes. 
Is there any, any more, more questions for anyone else? Uh, so with that being said, I don't want to keep you here all night long. <laughs> and I know we have other uh, activities to perform, but like I say, I really thank uh, the time that each one of you devoted. I hope I have not wasted it. <laughs> I hope that you benefit from this experience and perhaps be able to retain it and recover when the time is due and you have to really, the opportunity presents itself and you could benefit from reorienting your thoughts, your words, and your actions that you do so, because that's the only way we're gonna leave the old self behind and work on who we're supposed to be. Thank you. So friends, since we are here, it's important for us yesterday. Thank you so much, Sergio. Thank you. It's very inspiring, deeply inspiring. So inspirational that it reminds us of a passage that we discussed at Kardec Radio yesterday at 11 p.m. Emmanuel, who once were the, in the, he was, he belonged to the Roman Empire as a senator. It's interesting because in his role of coordinator of the coming of spiritism, the development of the spiritist science, he wrote an invitation to all of us in 1993 through Chico Xavier. And we read it a few nights ago. First, he calls us to be the sentinels of the sanctuary lamp. Quite interesting because if you go to the Jewish tradition, there is this, the ritual, right? The sanctuary lamp that needs to keep burning and the meaning of it all. And then the Catholic tradition borrowed it, expanded it, and they keep doing the same, which mainly meant that the Lord is present. So, Emilio then writes through Chico Xavier to all of us saying, you spiritists in this conflicted world are to embrace this guardship, being the sentinels, meaning the job of keeping lit this sanctuary lamp. The general, talking about the military, is the one to, that creates the strategy, but it's on the soldiers, the sentinels, just to execute and keep it lit. Because people will look for it if we keep it alive. They will come at the time that is appropriate. Think about Pedro Leopoldo, a little tiny town, if I may say this, this way, very Catholic. And there were few spiritists. And then in Chico Xavier's family, one person is very ill and the whole family is invited to the rescuing of that person. A couple comes, they're spiritists, and simply shares the knowledge, gives the passes, the healing happens. And in that healing, beyond the healing comes Chico Xavier, and we are here today. The same happened with Divaldo Franco, Professor Ripz Barcenolfo, so many others. The person who gave the Spirit's book to Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, one person, the sentinel of the sanctuary lamp, they just shared the book. And we have the legacy, Dr. Rosario de Menezes' legacy to date. We have one uncle who gave the book after death by Leon Denis to Professor Ripto Barsanufo. From there on, his legacy. And so many names we can name here. We talk about the ones who developed the legacy, but we can't forget But behind them. There are those sentinels, who were faithful, 
who kept the sanctuary lamp alive and continued. And then in another message, since we're talking about prayers, Emmanuel talks about he invites us to belong to a league. And he talks about we invite you, he says, to belong to a league of heavenly prayers. Heavenly prayers. And to clarify, he says, a desire is a prayer. And there are many people who desire many things that are nothing to do with heaven. So he says, if you want to belong to the League of Heavenly Prayers, we need to learn to pray. So tonight, we were granted the tools to belong to the League. And why do they need a group of people to associate themselves in heavenly prayers? He talks about wars. 1993. That message is so current. He talks about the transition that is still going on the planet. And we are all being invited to join in and be more prayerful to the benefit of the whole planet. And with the collection of prayers that you presented so beautifully in such an invitational way, we're invited to do exactly be active go there and embrace it right now our children are inside and they are learning precisely that what it is to be an active co-creator because often we believe in God and we sit and feel well God created me I'm just a creature no it means you're a co-creator so let's work so we need to do our share and the share is to join into this league of heavenly prayers transform our desires so they become more heavenly and we pray together for the benefit of it all all we have to do is to guard this sanctuary lamp in our hearts from there on we just share wherever we are if not with words saint francis says with actions and complementing with words so we are deeply grateful that you guys came and that you shared in this beautiful perspective. It's refreshing for us. And uh, we will do our prayers as well so the projects expand because we're sure that good things, as Emmanuel says, only come from above. And so shall they expand Okay, friends, so we invite everyone to join us in this passes moment, recalling that right now it's not only about us, but all the family connected to us, the people connected to our lives, some people at work may be benefited as well. And it's about the discarnates who are being brought here, who are being rescued through the process so when we are called to the first row to be seated and receive it, let us use it as service as well, not only for us, but thinking of our homes, our workplaces, and the many people who may be even in the streets, shelters, who are in extreme need, and we may not be fully aware of it. Okay? We're going to dim the light, right, Tony? Thank you so much.